Yes, my name is Dave Spooner. Uh, I've been a member of the Woodland Woodcarver since 2001, uh, self-taught. I uh, find the demonstrations from this club so uh, educational. Uh, it's been a, a wonderful resource, uh, plus the camaraderie of the members, it's just been great. Uh, I'm doing a demonstration today on uh, a laminated uh, uh, a gun stock and um, I'll show you the progression of the assembly, the glue ups, the shaping of the stock to be able to prepare it for the carving. So we start with, um, I've got two pieces of walnut, three pieces of oak and I start with nine sixteenths of an inch thickness. And how I determined that was the width of this tang from the gun receiver. Uh, now, this piece is a 12 gauge single uh, barreled shotgun. Now, we've got, um, there's two different ways, there's two basic ways to connect the, the uh, receiver to the gun stock. And we're gonna cover the one area, which is you've got a center screw holding the stock on. So I start with the center piece. Um, uh, what I start with on the connection is, is I'll lay the, the receiver here and I'll scribe it with a pencil And then cut it here. So I'm going to cut this area here. And then once, once that material is away and I can fit that receiver to that center piece, uh, then I go to my two outside pieces, my walnut. And what I do is I chamfer these edges on each piece. And the reason why I chamfer it is because you've got a little radius here, so you want to cut a little radius with your block plane here to shape it. Once you do that, then you can come over here and glue them all together laminate them is what needs to be done is you'll fit your receiver into your center piece and glue one piece at a time. So in other words, you're going to put one piece up here, glue it, clamp it, let it set up. Once it's set up, you can take your other piece and clamp it up and glue it. And the reason why you do one piece at a time instead of all three, because with your glue, you have a tendency to move the wood shifting around. This way you've got a better control of your clamp up and to uh, get a better fit too, because you want as close as fit as you could. Uh, once that is accomplished and you're set up, um, then it's your pattern. You'll lay right there. Now the advantage of the glue ups, your your laminated wood stock, is you can recreate your own um, design for your gun stock. Say for example, this is the original gun stock for that receiver. So uh, if I lay it out here. If I lay it out here like this, you can see how I can modify that design. So um, that'll give me the opportunity to change the design if I want to, for whatever I want. It, this also gives me the advantage of doing a higher relief carving than you would normally on a on a pre-existing stock, what's uh, gun stock? 
Now, um, once that's glued up and you've got uh, everything fitting right to your satisfaction, then what you could do is cut this out with a bandsaw. You can cut this profile out with the bandsaw. Once you get that cut out, uh, you can, uh, once you get this cut out and then fit really good close to the receiver, then you can come over and then glue two more pieces. For example, you've got flat stock here. You can glue it to, the, uh, to your butt end of the wood stock. And then you got one piece at your pistol grip. And you see in this case, we've taken a compass and cut a radius right there. And, and what that helps you do is establish some of your witness lines. Or I call them guidelines. You can call them anything you need to. Uh, so when you... get to that point, you've got the gun stock in this shape. Uh, now I normally use tight bond number three uh, glue to laminate everything up. Uh, it seems to work good with me. It's, it's, uh, it's I think, the best glue you can use for uh, a, a project like this because it, it is semi waterproof uh, which is the only glue that's not a two part I believe or the best glue for for that particular situation so what I do after that is create my guidelines and when walnut I use uh, a white pencil to do that and then I create them I'll take and and figure out my best way to lay this out would be to take, uh, I usually like to put my butt plate on the edge here and then scribe my, scribe my uh, witness lines or guide my lines. I've got my radius there. And what I like to do too, when I start carving, I like to attach the butt plate to it the butt plate that I'm going to use. And that'll help establish so you don't overcut into the stock. So uh, once I get my center line, say for example, in this case, I get my absolute center of this stock. And usually uh, an easy part to do it would be you've got this, I'll take my finger, I'll find my center of my oak, and I'll run my pencil line down there. All the way up through here, and, and down around here. And of course, down around here. Uh, once that's established, I'll take a white pencil for the, for the, uh, for the walnut, and I'll take my finger, as a guide, I'll hold it there and I'll run the first guideline all the way around like that. I'll actually take the center where I want to carve my center, my high point of my carving, and I'll run it right down the center like this. And I've got the dowels in there for the sake of showing or illustrating my center point and I could use it for a design element also. And also here on the edge, I can do the same thing with my guidelines. I can run my, use my pencil, my, my finger here in my white pencil, and I can run it down like this. So I've got my, the center, the high point, the very, the very edge of uh, my other point, and, uh, now I, I'll, I'll run another center line here to be able to establish the drop-off point for that trough that I'm going to cut with a chisel to establish 
part of the shaping of the pistol grip um, part of the stock. Uh, also, make a line right here for the contour of the receiver. Once I do that, then I'll do a guideline here, down through here. I'll do a guideline like this, using my finger again. Uh, and in this case, I'll use the center line of the dowel. And, and again, um, the dowels aren't necessary. They're just, in this case, a design element. And again, where you're just using your finger to be able to create that guideline. And again, we're just reestablishing this. So when it comes down to shaping, we're going to use those guidelines to control our plane, our spoke shave, our chisels, and everything else. We're going to try to leave this part a little high for our carving, where we're going to put our, put our pattern. So in this, in this video, we're just going to shape the gun stock and prepare it for a carving. In the next phase, I've got it here in the vise. Um, and just a quick explanation on what I've got to work with. I've got a Craig table, uh, which is portable, and the reason why I like that is it seems to be uh, very good for the type of work we got here. Uh, I've got a pattern maker, ma maker's vise, which is anchored to the, uh, to the work piece uh, by the way of a stud and a big fly fly nut, which is uh, easy, it, it, it uh, installs quick, fast, it can be pulled off. Uh, I also got a, a cutoff saw, Japanese pull saw, and the reason why I've got the saw is to cut some of these guidelines so we don't have the chisel maybe damaging uh, some of the carving or splitting it. I've also got some chisels, uh, Swiss made, uh, and I've got a couple block planes. Uh, a regular block plane, uh, a low angle, a couple spoke shaves, and a chisel plane. So to start with, uh, I think what I'll do first of all is to cut close to the radius on the bottom of the pistol grip area of the stock first. And then I'll take my chisel and cut this trough, uh, getting close to the uh, guidelines and I'll also use a spoke shave to contour this area. So uh, I'm gonna right there, that's the start of it chisel and then first I'm going to round this area. Got I like a round mallet. Uh, it seems for me it seems easier to control and I'm going to take these guidelines right here okay. I'm going to flip this around. And, and the reason why I'm going from this side for a little bit so I don't break out any wood. And I'll go back on the other side. This helps contour. See, I'm going to that contour line. Again, you're careful so you don't break out the grain or break out something that you don't want to miss. Okay. And we're going to go to to this. See if I can
and I'm off to the Washington my guideline over here so I don't take too much away. So it's better just to take a little bit at a time than too much at a time. It gives you better control. And I think for now we could probably go into the next phase. This phase of the, of the operation is I like to put the butt plate on first. And the reason why I do, you don't have to, but what I like, why, the reason why I like to is it prevents you from gouging beyond that line. Uh, so it helps you keep yourself out of trouble. So I, I clamp this in place, and these are uh, Craig clamps. They, uh, there will, one comes with the table, and I tell you, for wood carving like this, it is just great. So uh, I go and clamp it in the position that might work for me this time. And then I'll take a block plane and then start shaping it. So uh, in this, for now, I'll start with the top. And I'm going to work this down. I've got a guideline here. I've got a guideline here. So my, uh, my object is to cut that all back. A low angle block plane. Maybe I'll do a little bit this way while I got it here. Now we're going to flip it so we can do this side. Uh, we had to flip the table here for the sake of the camera because uh, we're following the grain. And we want to follow the grain so you don't split out some wood that you don't want to lose. Now, so I'm going to take this side here and then work it back. Okay. And uh, we have shaped it down to that at this point. And there's our center line, and there's our center line up here. We're trying to keep as close to that radius as we can. So from this point on, I think maybe I'll put her back in the vise and do some more shaping up here and a little back, back here. So we've got it shaped down to this at this point. We've got it shaped down. In this area, down this area, I left this proud uh, in this because at, at a later point, we'll do some sanding to refine some of these chisel marks. Okay, we're uh, at this point where we can put the pattern on. And I leave this area uh, pretty much untouched with any of the tools here. And you'll see that normally, you'd have a slope in the stock. So this gives us an opportunity to be able to do a higher relief carving. So uh, what I've done, now normally uh, I start by a pattern, creating a pattern, and uh, in this case I had to reverse it. And the way I reversed it is with a light board, and I put my figure on the light board and it brought it through, and you copy it with a pencil, cut it out, paste it on your, your, your wood, and that. For the sake of time, I've excavated the wood around it, around the perimeter of the carving. And in this case, it's going to be, um, to start out, I've created some stop cuts to start the carving. Now what I do is once, once I've got the pattern uh, established and I've excavated the material around it, I go through there and I eyeball, eyeball the, uh, the high part of the, the carving. So I might kind of take a pencil and then visually put the high part of the, the carving 
in certain areas. Uh, just about like that. And then I'll take and round off. Now, in this case, uh, it's a squirrel. And with the eye, I cheat a little bit. And I use an eye punch. Establish that. Because I've noticed in the past, if you just write it in there or just copy it, sometimes you'll lose that position with your eye. This way it's, it's there and you don't have to worry about losing it. So I'll take one of my chisels here and then start rounding off to get into the high spots. And a lot of times you've got to watch where your grain is going. Uh, sometimes it'll change as you're carving, depending on what position you're in. And then there's my first one of my stop cuts. Kind of rounding off the edges here, getting into that one. Get into his head there. Divot there where it goes down into a snout. Just be careful to not break away any little deeper so I'm just going to go over there and deepen that stop cut and maybe I'll deepen this one here up a little bit too I think a little rounding action round off with the tail a little bit and round over this a little bit clean that up a little bit Smaller chisel there. Smaller gouge. Kind of define that back ear there. A little hidden. Just kind of clean up that around here. Help define it a little better. Now if you could see that. But a lot of times what I'll do is maybe with walnut, uh, it helps to have a white pencil with you where you can kind of discern the figure a little better. I don't know if you could see that any better or not. And then sometimes you can take a parting tool, clean it up a little bit. Make it a little more defined. Kind of smooth it out a little bit. Okay, and then if you want to put some texturing to the tail, <coughs> and then there's the basic squirrel, and then the oak leaves created some stop cuts here and then you've got one leaf that goes underneath the other one so discern that you can do a little undercutting uh, same way with your little egg horns and they're really small so it's easy for that to break out so you got to go over there very gingerly and then what I'll do a lot of times with walnut, it's so dark, sometimes I'll take uh, wood burning and uh, do a little texturing with wood burning, uh, like with the squirrel and then uh, with the oak leaves here. And that would help bring out some of the details. And a smaller one, kind of need a concave thing with the leaves and give it a little dimension and then right there. D 
deeper stop cut by the acorns so we don't break them out too bad. Kind of round these off a little bit down there. And then I'll come back here and put a trough in there. I think we want to establish that line in the leaf. little veins kind of round off these acorns a little bit so we can see them a little better sometimes you can create a stop cut with your chisels your gouges and let's see that look so just a little refining and we'll be all set for finish and again to show the other side what I did previously <laughs>